Now we know the word is truth. And we know the word brings life. We've been studying Revelation, I guess, for about six or seven months now. So we're now in Revelation 17. So you can open up to Revelation chapter 17. There's many things going on right now. <coughs> The Lord, through John the Revelator, was trying to prepare us for a type of season that we may even be in right now. I happen to believe we're definitely in the beginnings of this revelation. Uh, there's a lot more to see, but we're definitely seeing a whole lot of things start to line up. I want to start out with Revelation 17, verse 5. That's where the Lord's leading me to start out with. <coughs> if you're there, say amen. 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 This may be a little bit of both. One of them kind of sermons may be hard to read. But I was praying it's an amen sermon. Amen. amen. <laughs> Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Let us bow our head. Dear Heavenly Father, in the most awesome name of Jesus, we come before you. Lord God, help me to decrease that you increase, dear Lord Jesus. We need the teacher, the Holy Spirit, to come and give us the insight and revelation, dear Lord, of your word. No man can know your word without the Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. We call out to you, Lord. We need your presence, dear Lord. There are people that need deliverance. There are people that need encouragement. Some of us need rebuke. Some of us need reproving, Lord God. Do whatever you got to do with us, Lord, to straighten us out, put us on the right path, the narrow path. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. 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 Praise amen. God. I bet y'all thought I was going to keep on going, didn't you? <laughs> My goodness, again, sit here and pray for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Going back to verse 1, Revelation 17, 1. I opened up with verse 5 for a reason. I'll show you why this is called a harlot. When he starts uh, speaking here. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore who sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. First of all, when we see the word whore used in fornication, we've got to understand this is not a physical thing. This is not a physical prostitute or a physical fornication. This is a spiritual fornication. Does everybody know how you can commit spiritual fornication or spiritual adultery? What happens is when you desire to touch and agree are to worship or to call upon a false God. Not being faithful to the one true God through Amen. Jesus Christ, the only way, truth, and life, the only way to the Father, but also touching and agreeing with a false God, you commit fornication. Now, if you're a Christian, if you call yourself saved and you have a relationship with the bridegroom, because the Christian is called the body of Christ, that means we are married to Jesus. And then you decide to touch and agree with false systems and false gods and many higher powers and many ways to heaven. That is spiritual adultery. And that becomes also a system of the great harlot. It becomes a whore. We must understand certain things that are happening right now that are transpiring. It's like there's many avenues that's going to build this one world system. Revelation 17 is talking about a one world religious system. And then Probably next, we're going to Revelation 18, maybe next Sunday or the next, where it's talking about a one world governmental system. You see, there's going to be a one world religious system that everybody leads to, and there's going to be a one world governmental system, and then the Antichrist will set over both. You understand what I'm saying now? But what we got to study tonight is how Satan is using many, many systems and many, many different programs and many, many different areas in religion to lead people to this one harlot, to this mother of harlots, throughout the whole world. Well, I know in our little community called America, uh, many people, what they do is when we get into sin, we get ourselves into bondage. You see, certain things we do like drinking, smoking, taking dope, shooting dope, and all these other things, that is the result of sin. And most of us, what is the root of all sin is the sin of unbelief. When we get into that, we start having these outer repercussions. And many people call them addictions. Well, there's many different avenues to 
that's going to form the harlot. And I got, I'm going to go over two of them tonight. And this is, keep in mind, I'm not trying to make anybody angry. I'm not trying to upset anybody. This is not to frustrate anyone. This is to try to give you insight to what this is about and what has happened. Because what we have is the serpent in the garden. And the serpent in the garden is very subtle, like he did with Eve. He, uh, he attracted her in a certain way and then spoke certain things and twisted the word of God to try to take her attention and put it on him instead of God. And he did it. Okay, the first system we're talking about, well, let me keep reading real fast. He said, in verse 2, it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. <clears throat> there are many people that call this many different things. Uh, universalism, that all roads lead to the same place, is a big one right now. People like Oprah Winfrey teach these things. That uh, we all have a God that we serve, but it's the same God. No matter what culture you were raised in, you're worshiping one God. And there's other people that teach. There's a whole religion, denomination that teaches universalism. And uh, they got many different names for their churches, but they say that we all serve the same God. Well, one of the real subtle ones is if you need deliverance, our court system, if you get in trouble, will put you in AA or NA. AA or NA is a system that is starting to set up to bring people to a sympathetic heart of false god worship. You end up touching and agreeing and praying with people that worship different types of gods. It's called a higher power. You may not agree with it, but if you're inside that system, you're still inside of it. If you're a Christian, you need to go ahead and come out of it and start telling people the truth. Because if not, you're going to wind up in the great harlot. This system is trying to teach people that everybody, that you be compassionate towards everybody if they worship the Hindu God, the Buddhist God, the God of Islam. And compassion for the person is true. But you don't have compassion for that false God. You must have indignation according to the Word of God. And that's false. And that person is going to hell. If you really have love and you really care in your heart about other people, you would not want to see them burn forever, would you? Do you? Nope. Do you have anything in your heart at all? When you hear somebody talking about, say for instance, poor Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is in sexual addiction. He's having a problem. 